All right, I'm doing a six part series entitled A Guide to Switching to Linux Ubuntu Edition. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over navigating the Ubuntu desktop. Now Ubuntu out of the box probably looks different than what you used to, but it's actually fairly straightforward and it works well once you get used to it, which is probably not gonna take nearly as long as you'd think. But anyway, let's get right into it. All right, so now this is what the login screen looks like. Up here, you got the current date and time. And if you click on that, you get your calendar, which is very straightforward to go through. And you can close this by clicking anywhere outside of it. And then up here, you got your accessibility options, which you can go explore in your own time. It's very easy. You just click on one and it turns it on. Now it'll automatically close the high contrast menu once you click on it. So you're gonna have to go back here and turn it off. And then if you ever want to close it, you just click out of it. So now here are your other options like your volume control, which you can adjust here. And you can also adjust this by pressing the volume up key or the volume down key to turn the volume up and down respectively. Now you will get these options once you're logged in. The power off slash logout menu, if you click on that, you'll get the option to put your computer to sleep or power it off. And if you click power off, this is where you get the option to shut down your computer or restart. Now, of course you can get out of this by pressing cancel. Now, if you do nothing here for a minute, it'll automatically shut down. And again, same principle, if you wanna get out of this, you just click anywhere outside of it. And then the not listed is where you type in your username and then your password if your username did not come up on this list. But anyway, now we can get to logging in by clicking our user. And by the way, this settings menu this is for changing your desktop environment. If you're more of an advanced Linux user that has multiple desktop environments installed, but that'll be later in your Linux journey. For now, let's log in by punching in our password. And by the way, if you wanted to show your password, you just click on this little icon here and then it's shown. And if you want to hide it, you click on that again. And then now that you're logged in, you get your desktop right here. So now same principle, you got your calendar up here, but you've also got your notifications here. And also you do get a do not disturb toggle, which will silence any notifications similar to what you'd have on your phone. And if you want to turn that off, you just, you just toggle that off and there you go. So now over here, now we've got our network connection options and our Bluetooth options, including the option to turn these off or go to their respective settings. Now opening one of these is very simple. You just click on that and then it opens it. And then to close it, you just click on it again. And then the settings option right here will take you into the system settings. Now I'm going to keep this open because we're going to look at this, but you also have the option to lock your computer, which will make you punch in your password to continue using your computer. You have to click anywhere on the screen or press any key as it says right there. And then you have to punch in your password to unlock it. Now you can also switch users by clicking here and then we're back at the login screen and then you just click any other user and then log back in like so and then there you go now you also get the same menu up on the right that you have in the login screen you have the option to suspend the computer which is basically what linux calls sleep mode but anyway we can click out of here then punch in our password and then we are back in so now again under the power off settings you get the same suspend power off options but you also get the option to log out which then you just click on that then click log out again to log out or if you don't want to log out you just click cancel and if you do nothing here for 60 seconds it'll log you out automatically now let's actually go to the settings menu so now if we click here we can maximize the window and then clicking here again will shrink it back down to its original size let's have this maximized and if you want to minimize the window just click here and then it'll disappear to your dock you want to bring it back up again you just click on the icon in your dock that would correspond with that application and then if you want to close it you just click this red x here and then the application's closed so now let's go back into our settings maximize this. So now the search button here will bring up a search box and then you can just go search for any setting. Like if you want to go search for your resolution, it'll bring you the option. If you want to search for your wallpaper settings, then it'll show you the menu that the setting's under, which you could probably guess based on its description. But you click on that and then it will bring you to that settings menu. And of course you can switch settings menus from here like so. Now this network connections is where you're going to set up your ethernet. And by the way, if you have a Wi-Fi card, it'll also have a Wi-Fi menu right here. Now I'm doing this in a virtual machine, so that's why it doesn't show up. And if you want to get into the advanced settings, you just click on the settings for that connection. And then there you go. And then you can set up your VPN configuration here. And also your proxy settings are right here. We can get out of that by clicking that red X. 
Now if we go down to Bluetooth, this is where you would connect your Bluetooth devices for file transfers or if you have your wireless headphones, you connect those here. But anyway, if we go into the background, this is where you configure your wallpaper. Now you got a few default wallpapers here, but you can also click add picture and then select a file from anywhere on your system and then click open. And if you want to search for a file, you just click search and then type in your search term. And if you want to get out of this, you just press cancel. So now I'm happy with the so now if you want to change the background, say you want to change it to this nice one, click on what you want to change it to, and then it applies the wallpaper. If you minimize it, there you go. Now I actually like the default wallpaper, so let's change that back. And now the appearance settings is where you're going to choose in between a few basic themes for your system. Now, of course, with Linux, you can apply custom themes, but that's probably going to be a little later in your Linux life. This video is just focused on the basics, but anyway, we can choose the light theme here, which looks like this. Now the standard is the black title bar. And if you want the dark theme, there you go. But anyway, let's switch back to the standard theme here. We've got other settings here. If you want to auto hide the dock, you just click that on, then there you go. Now, if you want to show the dock again, you're going to have to go up to activities here. Now in the activities view, you can just close any application from here by clicking the red X and you can click on an application to get into it. So now let's actually turn this off since I don't really like that. And you can also change the dock's position from right here. Say you want it on the bottom because you're used to that. You can totally do that. However, I actually like it on the left. And of course you can change your icon size from here. If you want it larger or smaller, there you go. I actually like the default, so let's do that. So now I'm not going to go over every setting in here because a lot of these are actually pretty boring and I don't want to make this video unnecessarily long. Besides, I'm sure after I show you a few, you can figure the rest out. So now if you go to your users, this is where you're going to go set up your user accounts. If you want to change your password, you just go to your user, then click on password, punch in your current password, new password, and then you're going to have to confirm the new password. And then once you've done that, you just click change up here. Now I don't actually want to change my password, so I'm going to click cancel. So now if you click this little pencil line, icon up here. This is where you can edit your full name. Now, unfortunately, you cannot edit the username that you punched in under username when you were creating your account. But anyway, once you're done with that, you just hit enter and then there you go. So now if you ever want to change your icon, you just click here and then select an icon from here. Or you could also select an image like so. Now, if you like this one, for example, you just click on that. There you go. Now that's your login icon. So now if you want to add a user, you have to click this unlock button right here, then enter your password. And by the way, your account will have to be set to administrator in order to do this. And now once you do that, you'll see this add user button where you go and set up the user account. You just type in their name, their username. Now it says that this can't be changed as I just said. And for password, you can allow a user to set it up when they first log in, or you can set a password for them right now. And you can toggle between these by clicking these radio buttons. And then once you're done that, you just click add. Now the account type controls the privileges that the account has on your system, kind of similar to what you're used to on Windows or Mac. Basically, an administrator account, unlike a standard account, is allowed to add users, install new software, etc. Basically, administrators have full control of the computer, whereas standard users, their control is more limited. But anyway, I don't actually want to add a new user, so I'm going to click cancel. Now, default applications is where you're going to go configure what applications you want for the most common types of use cases. Say you want to use another web browser as your default browser, and after you've installed your web browser of choice, you can click here and then change the web browser from here. Or if you want to use a different mail client, you install your mail client of choice, then click here and change the mail client. So now if you want to set up a printer, you go up to printers, and then you can click the add button up here, and you can also click add a printer right here, and then it'll go search for printers on your local network, and then you just go ahead and click on whatever printer you want, and then click add. Now if your printer is not listed here, you could just click here and type in the IP address of your printer, which you can find in your printer's network settings. Now now you're both going to have to be on the same Wi-Fi network for adding the printer to work. But anyway, I don't actually want to add a printer, so I'm going to click cancel. Now under the about tab, you get to learn a little bit about your computer, including the processor it has, the amount of RAM it has. Now this is just a virtual machine with like two gigs of RAM, but it'll also show your disk capacity, graphics card, the version of Ubuntu you have. And the OS type is almost always going to be 64-bit, and it'll show the version of 
GNOME you have, as well as your windowing system. And if your machine is virtualized, it'll show you your virtualization platform. And of course your device name, which you can change by clicking on this device name button right here. And then it brings up a dialog box to change your device name and you can change it here. And then once you punch in your new name, just click rename. Now I don't actually wanna rename the device. So I'm gonna click cancel. But anyway, now let's get to the privacy settings. Now, of course you can feel free to go through this on your own time. We've got file history. If you find you don't like this, you can always turn it off and clear the history. Now I would actually turn this on to prevent your drive from being cluttered with temporary files. And I had set the automatically delete period to 30 days. Now, if you want to, you can also automatically delete trash content. However, just beware if you accidentally put something in the trash and forget about it, it will be deleted after the time specified here. Now under screen lock, you can set your delay to whatever you want. Then the automatic screen lock delay controls how long after the screen is blanked. So basically the screen will turn off if the system has been inactive for this amount of time. And then this controls how much time after that until the system actually locks and you're forced to enter in your password. Now I would leave this on for security reasons, just in case you forget to lock your system, then the lock for you. In fact, I'd actually reduce this to one minute. However, if you find that it's too short, you can always increase it from here. Now one setting you should change is if you go into diagnostics here, then send error reports to canonical, you're going to want to change this to never. And so basically disable telemetry on your system. So now we can get out of this menu by clicking this back button. And then this right here, which will change depending on what application you're using, shows your active window. Say I open the files app right here. It'll change that to show what the active window is. If I make this the active window, it comes up here and I can interact with it. And of course you can switch active windows by clicking here on the dock. Now you can't really do much with the window unless it is active. You can tell whether it's active by whether it comes up on top or by the shading of the title bar and of the buttons. So now let's actually get out of here. And we can also quit an application from here. So now let's close out of this. And then we've got other applications on our dock, like our files app. Now this is basically your file manager on Ubuntu. You get a few different folders here. You've got documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, and other stuff. And now your desktop obviously shows the files on your desktop. Then your home folder is kind of like the living room of all of your files. It's basically like the root of where all your files are stored on your account. So if you want to create a new folder, you could right click, then click new folder, and then give it a name, then click create. Now I don't actually want to create a new folder, so I'm going to so I'm gonna click cancel. And you could also go up here, then click this button right here, and then you can also create a new folder that way. So now this down here will let you customize your file manager in the way that you want, and you can change how your files are shown, like so. If you want this list format, you can do that. Or if you like this better, you can do that as well. And of course, you can search files by clicking here, and you get the back and forward buttons that you're used to. So now if you click on other locations, you can see the root of your Linux partition here, which is basically the equivalent of your C drive on Windows. Now if you're a new user, you almost never need to go in here. And if you have a Windows dual boot, you can also see your Windows partition from here. And then you can go, for example, import your files from your Windows partition to your Linux partition without the need for an external drive. Now you can't access your Linux partition from Windows due to file system issues, which is actually kind of funny that like Linux can see what's on your Windows partition, but Windows can't do vice versa. So now if you look over here on your dock, these are basically your mounted volumes. Once you connect an external drive and then open it up, it becomes a mounted volume. If you go to other locations and click here, that becomes a mounted volume. Now, of course you can eject a mounted volume by clicking on its eject button and if it's an external drive it'll show up here but anyway you can just click eject or unmount as it's called here or you can right click here and click unmount. Either way works, and then it's unmounted. It's now a similar principle with active windows. You can't really do much with the drive unless it's mounted. So anyway, your start files is basically for your most important files. For me personally, I actually never end up using it. But if you want to though, you can right click on a file, say your documents folder, and then click star, and then it shows up in your start. And if you want to unstar, you just right click on the file, then click on star. And alternatively, if you're using list view, you can actually click on that little star right next to it here, like so. 
system. But anyway, let's not ramble on too much about the file manager. So now obviously we've got other applications on our dock, like LibreOffice Writer, which is kind of like a Microsoft Word, but it's obviously not Microsoft Word. Now you can go through this on your own time, since I don't want to make this video longer than necessary. But anyway, I also want to say that you can also close an application by right clicking on it on the dock, then clicking quit. Now if you go to show applications, which shows all the applications on your system, you can see that LibreOffice is actually a whole suite of applications. So you got LibreOffice Impress right here, which I know you can't see the whole name, but anyway, it's kind of like a Microsoft PowerPoint for Linux. And then you've also got LibreOffice Calc here, which is kind of like a Microsoft Excel for Linux. And you can go look at LibreOffice Draw in your own time. But anyway, I kind of dub LibreOffice is kind of like a Microsoft Office for Linux. As you can see right here, there are two pages in this menu. You can click on the different buttons to switch between the pages, but you could also use the scroll wheel on your mouse or alternatively the two finger scroll if you're using a trackpad. So now if you go to the utilities folder here, this is where you'll see all the utilities on your system. Now if you're having trouble finding a particular utility in the root of this, but you know it's installed, it'll probably be hiding in the utilities folder. Now of course you can go create your own folders here by simply dragging and dropping like so. And now you got your own folder and then you can rename that folder by clicking here and then give it whatever name you want. And then once you're done, you just press enter and then there you go. Now if you want to get rid of a folder, you just drag all the applications out of it like so. And then there you go. Now the folder's gone. Kind of like what you do on your phone. And of course you could do the same things with the utilities folder as well if you wanted to. So now of course you got other applications like Rhythmbox is the music player for Ubuntu and text editor is the text editor similar to Notepad. And then videos is, you guessed it, the videos player. And most of the rest is pretty self-explanatory. You can go explore the rest of these on your own time. But anyway, if you wanted to add an application to the dock, say you want your settings app on the dock, similar principle with creating folders, you just drag it, and instead of dropping it on another application, you would drop it right on the dock. So now if you wanted to remove an application from the dock, you just right click on it, then click remove from favorites, and by the way, that's what it calls your dock. And if you wanted to move applications up the dock, you can just drag applications up or down like so, and there you go. So now, one thing I actually forgot to go over here is the trash, which is what Linux and Mac call the recycle bin. Very similar principle, either click on it and hit the delete key, or you could right click on it and click move to trash, or you could drag it and drop it in the trash, like so, and then it'll be in your trash. Of course, you can empty the trash by clicking empty, and it'll give you a confirmation dialog saying, are you sure you want to permanently delete all these files? If you don't want to, you can click cancel. If you want to delete one file, you can right click on it, then click delete from trash, and then same principle with emptying the trash, it'll give you a confirmation dialog, and you can click cancel if you don't want to delete it after all. Now, if you want to restore a file, you can just click on it, then click restore. And by the way, Sometimes when you go to show applications, it'll switch to showing you only your frequently used applications, which can be convenient because it can allow you to find applications that you use frequently more quickly, but it can be kind of confusing because then you're like, wait a minute, where do all the other applications go? In this case, you just have to click all and then it'll show all your applications. And now I know this is probably different than what you're used to, but I hope I cleared up any confusion, got you introduced to the new desktop, and it's actually really easy easy to use, especially once you get used to it. And that was navigating the Ubuntu desktop in a nutshell. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. And in my next video, I'll be going over installing software on Ubuntu. So stay tuned for that.